In this video, we will talk about roles and responsibilities and sim questions. So whenever you are going for an interview, then definitely the interview interviewer is going to ask the questions related to your roles and responsibilities. And this is 100% chances, right? So it's very rare cases that uh, the interviewer is not going to ask uh, roles and responsibilities and same questions. Well, whatever, whatever I have seen and whatever uh, my seniors, my juniors, I have seen and collected all those, uh, these data. And I have seen the roles and responsibilities was the main, uh, you can say main question that was included in all those 50 samples. So let's meet, uh, let me start with the, what is SIM? So you uh, you are already you are already working on that sim right so what exactly it is security information and in event management we can see uh, this is the uh, this is you uh, this is using for the real time analysis right and security alert generated by application and network network hardware so that's what sim and which sim you were using in your organization this is one of the question and what was the sources from where sim collection the logs so sources what what actually uh, the interviewer is asking here that from where your sim were uh, getting the locks so definitely it was an idea such ideas maybe the routers virtual machines servers different different places so but you should know your uh, organization architecture that exactly from where uh, your sim was collecting the uh, uh, sorry uh, collecting the locks right now what is QRadar, Splunk, okay, both are same. Uh, you can search on more on these things. Uh, what is the architecture, okay, these architecture, QRadar and Splunk, definitely they will ask about these things. So you can directly go, these two links I have shared. You can go and you can read these things. What are the components of QRadar, Splunk? So whatever the data, I don't know whether you are using QRadar or Splunk, right? So if you are, you are using QRadar, maybe let's say example, event data, flow data. So just go for that components. What actually uh, the log analysis, dashboard, there are a lot of things, uh, components in uh, QRadar and Splunk. Uh, for Splunk, let's say example, search had for uh, forwarder indexer. Uh, you can go through this link and you will get a lot of data. Now brief us about your career. So your career. So from where you have started. So you have to start from your academics, right, right from the academics, and uh, and including your graduation. Then after uh, your first job, second job, and then uh, what you have do uh, you have done apart from your roles and responsibilities. You can also mention these things uh, in your career. Please explain your roles and responsibilities at your, at your previous organization. So directly is asking about the roles and responsibilities. You can tell what, what was the uh, uh, roles and responsibilities and what are the other parts you were doing uh, apart from that roles and responsibilities. So you can mention those. It will give a good, uh, you can say, impression on the interviewer. So have you handled and any uh, sorry handle any big incident phishing email case in your career? So let's say you if you have investigated on any malware, if you investigated on any big phishing email, so you can mention those things here, right? So let's say example candidate handle emoted malware campaigns, right? So he will explain each and everything that how it for detected, uh, how he investigated step by step, and how and how he mitigated it, right? Uh, next two question we have explained this incident in the form of cyber kill chain. Okay, we already have discussed this one, correct? In the in the cyber kill chain video, we have already discussed it. What are the stages of incident management process? So that is very simple. You are uh, doing this process in your daily routine. That is incident identification, logging and categorization, incident notification and escalation, investigation, resolution and recovery, and then incident, uh, incident closure. Next question, how you handle any alert? So he's directly talking about that uh, the alert you are getting from SIM. So please explain the process. So you have to explain whole process that how actually you handle and how actually you were working uh, on those incidents. What is the event code for success and failure login? So it's 46244 login and 4625 is uh, successful login for 4624, 4625 for failure login. So you can you can check all, all those event codes. Uh, maybe they will uh, they will ask you different different codes. Uh, 
regarding such as uh, audit policy right these are the things uh, they can ask which certification you have done let's say if you have done the ch certification right so you should know about the ch what exactly in that because they can ask any question let's say uh, they can ask directly about the wireshark they can ask uh, about uh, nmap or uh, different different tools okay so what is nmap so nmap stands for network maker mapper and uh, we generally used it to scan a system and understand what weakness exists that a hacker could potentially exploit uh, through the nse engine if you remember we have used nmap right so as the program is open source and free it is one of the most uh, more common tool used for scanning network for open ports and other weakness 95th question what is the difference between ioc and io we have discussed it let's again discuss it so iocs are static but ios are dynamic ioa means indicator of attack so io uh, i can directly say is for adr and iocs are generally for the malware whatever we are getting on uh, daily routines right the known signatures you can say what is spare phishing so targeting a single person targeting a single person in any organization or any anything else uh, and sending sending one of the phishing emails doing the social engineering on it that is called spare phishing how you will do the analysis of phishing email so take this course this is the free course right and you can learn phishing email investigation from here this is totally free uh, as of this video uh, i'm making this video so as of now it's free header analysis you can also learn from there can you name some port number so you should uh, remember the important port number such as port 25 389 port number ldap 443 port number 80 right so these are the some basics but uh, uh, whatever the very on the daily basis whatever the you are port number you are working on you should know those port numbers what is dlp we already have discussed it right so i'm not discussing it okay dmark spf and dkm well uh, you can go through that free course you will get it but let me uh, tell you some some uh, some of the demo that what actually there's some small difference in these three so dmark is domain based of message authentication reporting and confirmation is the email authentication policy and reporting protocol uh, basically dmark under dmark we have spf and D, uh, dkm so spf uh, you know uh, spf shows that uh, uh, the ip address whatever the domain uh, the ip address is uh, related to that domain so it authenticated those things and dkim having some domain keys identified mail it means uh, uh, it gives you can say uh, it gives the integrity means that the content of the body is not changed so this is done by giving the email a digital signature this, so this is what dkim do spf means center policy framework for more details you can directly go jump to this free course and you can see there all those things how you will decide that on which alert you have to work first if there is 100 alert obviously if if there is some some 100 alerts there will be some uh, some priorities like uh, a high critical medium low so obviously i will choose the critical one which is very critical for my network so i will choose that one and i will work on it firstly why you want to leave your company that's a very uh, you know uh, very big question always you will get this question always so uh, you can tell i mean you can think your answer your, your answer could be different from mine one but uh, what i what i uh, just tell that i've learned a lot of things in my previous organization i explored as much as i can so now i feel that i should move for a challenging and for a new responsibility so that i can grow more and uh, you can add more things right so that so, so that it, it can give you a give the good impression to the interviewer what motivated you to come in this organization so you can say you have learned uh, uh, heard more things about that organization and there is a, a learning there is challenges and there is re new responsibilities and the, that matches your profile so that's why uh, these things motivated to come in that organization you can tell these things do you have any questions to us okay this is the last question well uh 
you can ask if you have any uh, any such good question then uh, you must go with that but if you don't have then i should suggest you don't ask any question if you don't have right so that's it guys uh, uh, we have this roles and responsibility that was a very uh, you know the the interview always asked these type of questions related to uh, roles and responsibilities so these 105 question is going to be a very uh, is going to be very helpful for you uh, as per our sample we have taken 50 interview sample and these were the repeated questions we were getting